I caught up with Liberal MP and former frontbencher Julian Lisa and asked him how, as a Jewish Australian, he could rationalise such atrocities being committed against innocent people. I don't have to be a Jewish Australian to be absolutely disgusted by it. Um, I think it's disgusting. This has been uh, an unprecedented attack by an organisation that we list in our own country as a terrorist organisation, Hamas, on innocent men, women and children. We've had women sexually assaulted in the street. We've had children captured, caged and killed. We've had Holocaust survivors kidnapped. We've had people attending a dance party murdered in the hundreds. This is an unprecedented attack. And we in Australia must have a values-based foreign policy, and that means standing with a democracy, the only real democracy in the Middle East, that shares our values. It's a very sad day. I'll come to the foreign policy and the way the international community is dealing with this in a moment, but I just want to focus for a while again on the humanity or the inhumanity here. We've seen on social media the sorts of things you've talked about. There are other families in Israel now who are awaiting, knowing that their daughters, their, their children, their friends and relatives are held by Hamas, not knowing what's going to happen with them. This is almost unprecedented to see this level of barbarity, yet we see people celebrated on the streets of Australia, yeah. in Europe, in North America. It's astounding that such hate, hatred could be there for Jewish people. Well, they describe anti-Semitism as the oldest hatred, the hatred that will never die, and the hatred of Israel is just the latest form of anti-Semitism. I want to condemn Australian organisations that are celebrating these, these disgusting attacks. Um, I'm somebody who regularly stands up for the human rights of other people around the world. Uh, whatever one's view on the general issue of Israel-Palestine is, no one should be um, praising or condoning the murder uh, and rape and kidnapping of innocent people going about their daily lives. Uh, this is just unprecedented in its depravity and disgust. And we should remind ourselves that Gaza is run by a listed terrorist organisation, Hamas, that we in Australia ourselves have listed as a terrorist organisation. This is not other people doing it, it's we ourselves have made that judgement. And if this was happening to Australians, and if this was happening to Australian family, how would we feel? And how would we feel that, uh, that, that Australians should react and Australia should react? And uh, I think we would want to see Australia do everything it could to defend itself, and that's what we should see Israel do, which is everything it can to defend itself. As a lawyer and a lawmaker, do you think that our federal authorities and state authorities, for that matter, should be looking at some of these celebrations to see whether the line has been crossed here when it comes to the law? Yes, I do. Um, I think part of the reason for listing Hamas, and I sat on the Joint Committee on Intelligence and Security at the time we listed Hamas and Hezbollah, uh, both decisions uh, I supported, both decisions were decisions made under the Morrison government. Um, people need to be wary of the fact that they are colluding with, terror with listed terrorist organisations in the celebration of these acts of depravity. Now, you talk about depravity, and it's almost horrible to talk about it in these terms, but this horrible attack, these atrocities were well-planned. It was a well-planned operation by Hamas. How much direct involvement do you believe there was from Iran? And what does that say about Western attempts at the moment to almost make peace with or appease Iran? Well, I think Iran has been deeply involved. We know they financed and supported Hamas for many years. Um, I think people who don't believe Iran uh, is involved haven't been paying attention. Uh, the Iranian regime is a criminal regime. I've said that in the parliament in relation to its treatment of its own people. The way in which Iran has been destabilising the entire region, whether it's Lebanon or Israel or Syria, um, is just, uh, just extraordinary. I think in Australia we need to reconsider our diplomatic relations with Iran. I think if we're to have a value-based foreign policy and we're to be serious about that, we have to question why we continue any sort of diplomatic relation. Well, we have an embassy in Tehran. I've been there. The Americans don't have a diplomatic relationship with Iran, but they gave them $6 billion just days ago to get people back. Is that the wrong approach? Are we seeing, this, are we seeing the consequences of that sort of weakness? My view is that uh, Iran doesn't deserve a seat at the table. They have become... Uh, they have been for a long time a rogue regime, a criminal regime. I think Australians are more and more aware of that because of the Iranian diaspora here raising issues. What we're seeing in Israel is the fruit of Iranian-sponsored terror around the world. And we, if we're serious about standing with our allies in the Middle East, like Israel, 
then I think we really do need to reconsider our relationship with Iran. When we talk about weakness being provocative in this sort of situation, don't we need to stand more strongly with Israel? Wasn't it a weak move by the current Labor government to go back from Australia's stance of recognising Jerusalem as the capital of Israel and return to the old position of Tel Aviv? In, in other words, not even recognising that Israel can choose its own capital. I think the government has been sending mixed messages on Israel for the entire time it's been in office. I think we saw that on the capital issue. We've seen that in the decision of the funding of UNRWA. We've seen that in votes in the United Nations. And we've seen that most recently at the Labor Party conference, where effectively um, the Labor foreign policy establishment sold out Israel in order, to in order to pacify the Jeremy Corbyn wing of the Australian Labor Party in order to preserve the AUKUS deal. And we had the Foreign Minister make a statement that Israel should show restraint. I think the Foreign Minister has a blind spot when it comes to Israel. I'm going to leave that there for now because I want to get on to another domestic issue, and that is The Voice. You're a leading proponent of The Voice. You resigned from the coalition front bench in order to campaign for The Voice. All the polls are suggesting it's heading for a, a de devastating defeat. Do you think the Yes campaign has failed here, that we haven't had a front person running the Yes campaign, that it hasn't been beating back some of the misinformation and spin from the No campaign, uh, it hasn't put enough detail out there? Chris, it's a bit like Mark Twain, reports of its death have been exaggerated. We've got five days to go and I'm spending each of those five days out talking to as many voters as I possibly can because I believe this is going to be for the good of the country. I believe uh, that this will make a positive difference in the quality of policy that we make about Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. It will help us close the gap. It helps us to complete the constitution by recognising Indigenous people in the way they want to be recognised. Um, the big choice for us uh, on the weekend is this. Yes, gets us a pathway to a better Australia with better quality policy. No gets us nowhere. No gets us no change. No continues a gap that shouldn't exist in a country as prosperous and successful as our own. If it fails, though, the pivotal point at which failure would have become inevitable is when the coalition decided to oppose it as a party room position. Do you have many more colleagues in the Federal Liberal Party who privately support the voice but are running silent on it in order to, pr to protect their careers? Well, look, individual colleagues made their decision at the time we took a decision as a party room, and I don't think it's right that you can put the blame on the Liberal Party for the but outcome But are you disappointed in some this? of your Liberal colleagues running dead on this issue when you know that they actually support a yes vote? I respect the decision of my colleagues on, on these matters. This is a matter of individual conscience for, for us all. I took a decision to step down from my position as Shadow Attorney General and Shadow Minister for Indigenous Australians so I could do precisely what I'm doing, which is make an argument for something that I've been involved in since 2014, which I passionately believe will make a real difference on the ground in Indigenous communities and which will complete our constitution. And I will fight every day between now and 6 o'clock on Saturday for every vote I can get. I'll talk to you after 6 o'clock on Saturday. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Chris.